What do you love most about having locks? Do you ever get the urge to cut your locks off and try something different? How do you feel that locks are perceived by society? If you're watching this video right now and you are hearing what I'm saying and you feel a little called out, I'm sorry. Welcome back to my channel it's your girl Shanice Akita and if you are new here first of all thank you for joining me today but second of all this channel is full of beauty lifestyle travel everything <laughs> I do a little bit of everything on this channel and I'm so happy you could join me so today we are going to be getting into a full-blown Q&A about my lock journey lock maintenance you name it. So I put out a call across all my all my social media channels and folks submitted some really good questions. So I'm really excited to dive into that tonight. But before we do that, be sure to thumbs up this video. It's a free and quick way to show your support of the channel and support your girl. I am a small creator and that means the world to me. Be sure to subscribe and Make sure you leave a comment afterwards because I want to engage with you. I want to know what you're thinking, especially given the nature of this video. And since we are going to be doing a little chit chat, you know, you see me, I'm like really chill right now. My hair is chill, like no makeup on. Like we, we are here and we're chatting. We're just hanging out. So in the nature of that, the only way to do that is to have a good little drink in hand. Hello, and I made this a little earlier and I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna wind down with the people and I definitely wanna show y'all how I made it. So just stay tuned to the end of the video for the surprise. All right, let's get into these questions. See my little purple iPad? <laughs> That's my favorite color if y'all ain't know. But anywho, so I got a bunch of different questions that targets like a lot of like my personal journey when it comes to um, my personal journey and my feelings when it comes to locks and having locks, just natural hair in general, some maintenance and styling questions, and then just some more advice type questions. So let's just dive in. The first question is, what do you love most about having locks? Um, and honestly, that's a pretty easy question for me. I like that I don't have flyaways. <laughs> And I know that's like probably the least of anybody's thoughts, but I always remember growing up because I have wanted to lock my hair for the longest while and like I had did it when I was like a teenager, I had started it and then I combed it out and I was like, I went back and forth, but I always admired people with locks because I just loved how their hair held a style. Like you put locks into an updo and that thing is staying. You know what I mean? Not a hair out of place. Like, I just love that. And that's like probably the most random way to answer this question, but <laughs> it is my truth. And so, yeah, that's how I feel about having locks just initially, like just off the surface. If I go deeper, um, I just really feel connected to my hair in a way that's way different than I did before. I feel like, like I said in my 10 year lock video, I feel like having locks, like I really had to consider my mindset, just the energy, like I didn't, suddenly I did not want everybody to be doing my hair and like that's, you know, a trait that you should follow altogether. But like, I just feel like when I was going through the journey of starting my locks, like I was going through like a self care journey and I don't know what it is about having locks that sort of pulls you into that but it was definitely phenomenal. So I would say that's like my deeper reason um, of my deeper thing that I love about having locks is just really the connection that I have to my hair. Like I really feel connected to my hair. All right, that was cute. So the next question is, do you ever get the urge to cut your locks off and try something different? Now, I just got done saying that I feel connected to my hair and that is, still a fact i feel like multiple things can be true but i absolutely do get that urge um i don't know if if you all remember from my from my 10 year log video 
like I talked about black women with the pixie cut that I get weak in the knees over a pixie cut it just looks so sleek and it just looks so good like it looks so empowering like I have short hair and like you know I don't know what it is about about the pixie cut but like I always well not always but it's a thought that I've been having as of late that maybe once I start having children I might cut my hair um and go to like a pixie cut yeah I be I be going from like like my hair is all the way down to wherever and like <laughs> I just go to the extreme like there's no like oh let me just I'm just like we gonna cut it off and go to a pixie cut um it's something that I thought about but I am also someone that like I really like to sit with my decisions maybe that's the Libra in me but I am not going to just make a rash decision and just be like, okay, whatever, I'm cutting my locks off because I also know how much they mean to me. And so when I have the thought about, you know, me pushing a stroller with my pixie cut, I'm also thinking about like how connected. But yeah, it always, I always come back to the fact that I feel really connected to my hair. So it, it then makes that that idea hard to deal with so short answer is yes I have thought about it um, but we'll see if I actually do it I don't know I don't know yet to be honest that was a really deep question like you know because I do sh I do struggle with that because sometimes you do want to have a change you know I've had locks for 10 years now and sometimes you do want something different um, but then it's just like I feel so connected so it's been a little dilemma of mine, so that was actually a really good question. Um, okay, so question number three. How do you feel that locks are perceived by society? Ooh, that's a really good one. So if I'm being honest, which you will always expect on this channel, I'm gonna keep it a stack. Um, I feel like, I feel like just as with most things in society, depending on like who you're interacting with, there will be a different perception. So I feel like when it comes to locks, like speaking from my experience specifically, right? I know that I experienced, you know, when I told some of my family members that I was locking my hair, like they instantly freaked out and was just like, why would you do that? Oh my God, like literally freaking out. They're like, you're not gonna get a job, all those sorts of things. Now, I have had those people where I'm like, I'm gonna lock my hair. They were super excited about it. What I have to note is that the folks who were not excited about it were much older. I wanna say maybe like Gen X. And that's, of course, that that's not everyone, right? Everybody, like I said in the beginning, everyone has a different approach to it. But I do feel like, you know, in society, like for a while, having locks was always deemed as like a bad thing. Um, it was like, oh, like people with locks, they just lazy, they radical, you know, they just smoke all day and they don't do blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you know, a lot, a lot of our elders grew up with this idea on, you know, what locks are like and it's stuck with some people. So it's hard to really break you out of this sort of psyche. So, you know, I don't get upset because at the end of the day, I'm going to make the decision for, you know, what I want to do. Um, but I do feel like in recent years, I do feel like society is more accepting of locks and just natural hair altogether. I mean, in 2014, when that whole like natural hair wave came through, I feel like more people started to accept, you know, people were doing their big chop, they were starting to accept natural hair. Um, and then I feel like as we started to really dive into black hair and what that experience is like, I feel like locks, braids, all of those counterparts just became more widely accepted, you know? Like I haven't, and let me knock on wood because you never know, you never know, right? But I haven't experienced, you know, where I walk into like a job interview or something and like, you know, I could tell they're feeling a way about my hair or even in the places where I, I have worked and is currently working, like I haven't had that experience at all. I mean, honestly, in my current role, like my CEO is a black woman with locks. So, you know, I just, 
I just feel like short answer to this because I, I do get deep in the questions because I like to be clear and like to explain but the short answer to this I feel like the perception of locks in society has grown and improved over time um, and I'm, I'm grateful for it you know I'm, I'm happy to see especially in our community as black people I am happy to see that you know locks natural hair are being more widely accepted okay let's get into the next question right so next question says do, 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 oh here it is do you believe hair is a major part of a woman's beauty why or why not um i feel like i feel like beauty is really an internal thing so like this question is a little difficult for me because i cannot i can't ignore beauty as a whole so it's like yes externally i do feel like women i can only speak as a black woman because that's what i am i feel like as black women we do love our hair we do spend a lot of time you know dealing with our hair and i'm not just talking about like folks in the lock community or natural hair community i'm talking about just anybody like a lot of people pour into their hair spend a lot of money on their hair etc right and i do feel like that comes with the beauty standard because you would see like people joking online like oh i i didn't hate myself i just needed my hair done or just something like that and it's like you know a lot of people tie that to beauty so on one hand i would say i would say yeah i would say yeah like a woman's hair is tied to her beauty i remember you know growing up i had like i would hear men talking about like oh like women with long hair and blah 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 and it's just like okay so there's a certain beauty standard that's out there now the other side of this coin which is why i said this question was difficult to answer is because i feel like beauty really has to do with your heart and i'm not even bsing you i really feel like beauty has to do with in here because I can't tell you how many people I met and I was like oh my god this guy's so handsome or, or this woman is so beautiful and then like I got to know them and I found out that they're ugly inside and their whole entire appearance became ugly to me it just became ugly to me because I'm just like you're not a nice person so I don't know so you know and perhaps maybe that it may feel like a cop-out in this question but I do feel like beauty is within, truly. So I feel like, I feel like when people truly believe that they are beautiful, like, you know, I love myself, I am beauty, I am radiating joy, I am radiating kindness, I am, I am those things. I feel like naturally that energy sort of pours out of you and you are beautiful, you know? And I feel like that can happen with, with someone with, with a bald head, a shaved head, short hair, long hair, you know, like hair that's thick, hair that's thin. Like I feel like, you know, so I guess short answer I would say it really depends. It really depends because I know that there is a beauty standard in society where, you know, we want women to look a certain kind of way. And there are women who um, abide by that and then there are women who are just like look I'm gonna live my life <laughs> I'm gonna live my life this is my body this is my hair I'm gonna do whatever I want um, and so honestly it really depends for me um, I don't feel like beauty is tied my beauty is tied to my hair because I like I said I believe my beauty is is here like when you get to know Shanice and you get to know me as a person I feel like my beauty is here do I feel like my beauty is also here? Absolutely. The face card is not declining, honey. <laughs> it's not declining, boo. I ain't crazy. But um, I don't feel like I enjoy having long hair. I enjoy having, you know, like even wearing it like this and, you know, like I enjoy it. But is it really tied to my beauty? Um, I would say not anymore. When I first cut my hair to start my locks, um, 
that was difficult because that was the first time I had shorter hair and I feel like since I went through that back then like I am now more accepting of myself um, to where that type of stuff is not really going to define me you know like the reason why I have kept my hair this long is because I feel connected to my hair in terms of like I I grew this I took care of it like that sort of thing not necessarily not not in a place of like oh I need long hair you know what I'm saying um, so yeah I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say in the comments about this because that's a really good question like is is your hair tied to how you perceive yourself as beautiful or not um, I don't feel so for me but I would love to know what you guys think and of course there's no judgment if you feel like it then that's fine you know like everyone is in a different stage in their life you know so it's totally fine but I'm curious so I hope that answers your question um, I know I got a little long-winded but I and look y'all y'all will get to know me even more as i continue putting out these videos like i am the type of person my brain is always on and it's always going like <laughs> i am gonna think i'm gonna i heard that question and i thought about it like 16 times and i continued thinking about it as i was answering because there's just so many different facets to that question that i feel like you know need to be addressed but yeah i hope that was good <laughs> moving on to the next one all right so the next question is getting into um a more of like a maintenance styling space so um someone asks how do you keep your retwist fresh while working out um and honestly i just tie my hair with the um like the black head tie that you guys would typically see me in like i tie my hair with that when i go to the gym and i just make sure like it's laying flat on like my edges and whatnot and i tie it like that and i head on into the gym um probably put my hair in a ponytail or something just to keep it off my face but that's really all i do um i know some girls who use there's like a sweatband and i'm, I'm gonna look for it and probably link it below just to make it easier for you guys but there's like a, a sweatband that you can use um, and it has like it has like a, a coating on the inside I don't I don't know if I'm doing it justice but I'm gonna look for it and link it below and probably pin the comment and, and show y'all what I'm talking about but some people have used that to sort of keep their their hair fresh um, but also too I'm a little biased because I'm a person I don't really sweat a lot when I work out um, no matter like no matter how hard I work out like my I don't really sweat in my head if that makes sense um, so I don't really deal with too much of like my hair getting too crazy or not or whatnot so yeah short answer I tie my hair with my bandana and then with my silk bandana thing that I have and that usually holds me together for the one to two hours that I'm in the gym okay these questions is flowing this question let's not forget the drink okay let's get on you i know you saw me sipping i know you saw me sipping a little, a little all right so um question number six says what is the biggest challenge with having long locks um damn what is big the biggest challenge with having long locks, I would say, is... Damn, what is the biggest challenge? Because I feel like it's so... <laughs> I feel like it's so many challenges. So for one, like, my hair is going to fly in my food almost all the time. Like, if I don't pull my hair back, like, I usually pull, like, two of these in the front and I tie it back, something like that. Um my food is just my my hair is just gonna fly on into my food and i hate that i would say definitely the weight um and i and not in a day-to-day -day per se but during wash day like when my hair is wet <laughs> when my hair is wet oh that thing is heavy it's so heavy 
and it's just like it's a strain to deal with um after your hair gets a certain length like doing my hair myself it has is becoming more and more of a chore each year as my hair continues to grow so i've been actually you know leaning more into going to a salon because i had found a really nice salon up where i live um and i really love their service so i am just like okay i'm gonna go lay in this bowl and you gonna take care of me and i don't have to worry about hands cramping or none of that okay you can sign me up okay but you know um biggest challenge yeah i would say the weight um and then also too like i feel like as a short person because i'm 5'3 having hair past my butt i feel like it really takes away from my frame because it's almost like like you take a picture of me from the back and i'm lost like you barely see me you just see hair and while i am grateful for that that is a blessing not everyone can can grow their hair not everyone has long hair i totally appreciate that and i don't want to come off ungrateful but it just like it for me it just gets a little difficult because you know sometimes i'm not really sure what i can do with my hair sometimes it's just it's just sort of like i guess a nuisance in a, in a sense um to deal with sometimes it's just it's just a inconvenience sometimes if i'm being honest it's just inconvenient sometimes um but yeah that's about it and granted i feel like everybody's long hair experience is probably different because there might be somebody on here that's like absolutely love having long locks much easier than having short locks like we have no idea but <laughs> i guess short answer i would say is definitely the weight when i'm washing my hair um the way that the length of my hair sort of like cuts my frame weird um that's difficult to deal with and i don't remember the third one i said but hair in my food is coming to mind I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's another thing. So those are my biggest challenges <laughs> with having long hair right now. All right. So this next question says, how do you style your locks for different occasions? Um, I feel like when my locks were shorter, I was doing way more <laughs> with them because it was much easier for me to manipulate myself. But as of late, I've been going for styles that will allow me to have two styles in one. So um, I know I did a tutorial on like the asymmetrical lock bob. That's been my go-to. Um, like last year for my birthday, I did that. And I loved it because I was able to have this cute bob for vacation. And then when I came back, I was able to let my hair down and it was these nice spiral curls, something like what you see it on this side of my head. <laughs> and this hair is from the bob that I had in my last video, I let it down because I did some travel recently, which is gonna, I'm gonna have a video coming for you guys very soon. Um, but I did some travel recently and I let it down and the humidity where I was, like I guess because I'm right-handed, when I did the bob myself, it didn't really take. So I have this side of my head <laughs> that's like super straight and this side, it's still curly but whatever I feel like the bob is a really good style for like you know vacations um, it's really a style you could dress up dress down and then I had did like a lock pedal ponytail that was really cute um, when I went to Paris that was really cute and it was fun and easy and it was just one style so I would tie my hair up I would put my my ponytail in like a little bonnet and like I was good to go um but like on a on an everyday sort of style I would definitely say a braid out and a twist out so the two strand twists um is good I really love the two strand twists the most because on the times when I wash my hair and I don't retwist it like I referred to in the last video I would just do two strand twists and it's it allows me to sort of look put together without having to overly manipulate my roots so that's good so those have been my go-to especially since my hair has gotten longer i just i'm looking for like you know things that are simple and easy to do since i do my hair myself majority of the time um i do have some special events coming up going into the end of the year my friend is getting married i have a gala coming up like lots of things is happening so i'm definitely gonna opt to do more 
formal hairstyles. Sometimes when I do updos, like my, my scalp can't take it. I'm a little tender headed sometimes. Um, and also too, it's not even just tender headed, but like the weight of my hair, just having it all sit on top of my head, it, it, it be a lot sometimes. So I'm gonna test out a couple things and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I share them with you. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. All right, y'all. How y'all feeling? Is it going good? Like, are we enjoying ourselves? Like, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you think about these questions. It's been going so good. We have three more questions. Um, and then we are going to call it. I am starting to feel this little margarita. And I barely see, I barely been sipping, like, babysitting. But yes, let's get into our next three questions. So, question number eight is, what's your advice for someone just starting their log journey? Um, my biggest piece of advice for somebody now starting their log journey is to not listen to nobody. Do not pay attention to anything that anybody has to say about what you wanna do with your hair. Your journey is yours. You know, if you're anything like me, it may be a spiritual journey as well. Like truly embrace it for what it is and just enjoy yourself there's i don't believe there's any like there's no such thing as an ugly phase when you're locking your hair i don't care how anybody feels about it there's no such thing like what what is ugly is your hair on your head no what's ugly about it because you you have some soft twist in your hair like i just don't i never understood that concept but um yeah like this journey is yours do not listen to the outside noise when people are like giving random unsolicited opinions don't listen to them like just really allow yourself to be in the moment and to feel what this is like it's an amazing journey if you let it more practical advice i would have for someone not, someone now starting their life journey is don't be afraid to wash your hair um when you're starting to um when you just get your depending on how you do it so i started with the comb coil so a way that i would wash my hair i would get like a stocking cap and then i would like scrub that way i don't unravel some of it because my hair was really fine when i started it well I, let me not say fine because i have thick hair but it was really like soft so my hair would un unravel sometimes um so to minimize that you could wash with a stocking cap on um i would say invest in like a hair gel that is not heavy because I had to learn the hard way, child. I had to learn the hard way. So Shanice did it, so you ain't gotta do it. Um, invest in like a lightweight gel. And remember to just keep taking your hair, taking care of your hair as you would if you weren't starting locks. Like locks is still hair, you know? Yes, it's a different type of hair. It's, it's a different style of hair, you know, in terms of what, what our hair does when it locks. But it still deserves a certain level of maintenance and a certain level of care. And you will do right by yourself if you, you know, have that in mind early on. So those are my few tidbits um, for like the emotional side of it and then the practical side of it. Because like I said, my brain is like, when I'm looking at these questions, I have so much to say. But yeah, those are my tips to that. So that was a cute question. Okay, the next one says, how do you feel about women girls women slash girls who don't embrace their natural hair texture what advice would you give them um so this question has two sides for me right i feel like people are entitled to their preference like i have some friends who you know they just it's just hard to keep maintain to maintain their hair on their own you know and like these salons we charge and all kind of crazy amount of money right and then sometimes it's just easier to to wear braids or to put your hair in a wig or whatever protective style you choose so in that sense i you know i don't feel any way about it i respect everybody having a decision you know on the other hand though i feel like there are some folks out there who opt to not engage with their natural hair because of some kind of negative connotation and what I mean when I say that is like, 
when I have, when I when I interact with folks and they're just like, oh, like I am not an Afro kind of girl, like I'm not a braids kind of girl, like I need my wig and my da 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 da. -da. It's like it. I say it depends because what is your reasoning for proclaiming that? I need to understand your why. You know, with the example I used earlier, it's like I I have a full time job. I have two kids. I need to just do whatever is quickest with my hair and so if I could just get it braided down and put a wig on or get some braids done and that's quick for my life and that's what I'm gonna do shout out to you queen kudos to you amazing totally here for it love it for you now if your why is out of like a, a feeling of lack or like an insecurity or you know feeling like your natural hair just is not worthy or whatever it is if it's anything in that category then that is where you lose me because at the end of the day and and i'm specifically speaking to my my black girls my girls of color you know society has a specific beauty standard that did not include us will never include us as we know like pop culture will take everything from black women <laughs> except the blackness they don't want to deal with that stuff right so they gonna wear the, the bamboo earrings and the cornrows and recall it change the name and all of that kind of stuff but it's like it really makes me sad when I hear other black people talk negatively about natural hair and it's like oh like her hair mad tough and she got this afro and like why you got it's just like what is the what is the purpose of that because at the end of the day we're black people <laughs> you know like you are a black person the way that your hair grows out of your head is directly correlated to your roots your origins your ancestors who put you here it just is what it is so for those folks the advice i would give to them is touch grass <laughs> No, on some serious like you really have to like like step take a step back um what i like to call zooming out you gotta zoom out and and start to like see just figure out where you are in this world and really get to understand yourself and know yourself and understand your culture and all of those things like i just feel like it's it's and like this question is so deep but it's so necessary and I'm, I'm happy um let me shout let me shout my girl out at lovejoy111 i'm so happy you asked this because it's so important because i feel like you know people tend to succumb to like societal pressure and societal like what society wants us to do and like as someone who has also been there not in terms of like my hair but in terms of just in general like you know the timeline of things or what have you whatever societal pressure like i feel like we've all felt it but when it comes to like who you are and your identity who you are walking this earth who you are in this life experience that makes me really sad and i really just want the girls to connect back to themselves reconnect plug back into the source you know like society ideals change so often so what you're going to do change yourself every time society is like this body is in this this hair is in this skin is in what are you going to do you got to really just love yourself and you also have to know who you are and that is those the things that i'm sharing they are not easy things to understand or attain it takes a lot of real work it takes continuous work but i feel like it's valid if you're watching this video right now and you are hearing what i'm saying and you feel a little called out i'm sorry i love you i'm sorry that you feel like that but this is probably what you needed like you probably needed to hear this to sort of snap out of it a little bit like there's so many different people in the world so many different cultures so many different experiences and like what what you really have to do is really accept yourself and accept what your experience is 
you cannot deny yourself and it really makes me sad when I hear people like bashing natural hair or natural hair textures or you know natural hairstyles and that was that was a long 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 route around the question but this is a really deep question so I guess to quickly sum it up I feel like it depends on your why if you are someone who enjoys doing your protective styles and whatnot because you have a certain kind of lifestyle that you have to adapt to then that's fine like you're not denying your hair even if you perming your hair like that's still fine like you know what could work for you but when it comes to a point where you are doing whatever it is that you're doing that is good for you but you thought you feel the need to have to bash other people their experience their their um appearance or like what they choose to do in terms of their hair that's when i have a problem with you no actually let me not even say i have a problem with you that's when you have a problem with you because <laughs> you are mad at you're downplaying other people for something that you also experience which is weird and so i would just like for the girls to to work on that and so um you know to all of you listening my biggest piece of advice is to just love yourself like we we are all lucky to be on this earth you know to have life to be experiencing the things that we experience good and bad if i'm being honest you know good and bad you have a when every day you wake up you have an opportunity to create whatever life that you want and so to be wasting that to be negative and to like be negative towards your own people like that's just that's just a bit much for me so i said a lot i said a lot we're gonna take a sip we're gonna take a sip on that Thank you, Lovejoy. That was a really good question. I appreciate you for um, being one of my day one girlies. Thank you so much. Um, and so, last question of the night. What is the most memorable or fun lock style you ever wore? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm make y'all go back to that 10 year lock video to be honest. I'm probably, let me see if I remember how it look on YouTube. I'm gonna put a card right here that's gonna take you to that video because that's where I went through all of my lock styles across the 10 years that I've had my locks. Um, and I would say the most memorable or fun lock style you wore. Damn, that's hard. I would say, ooh, it's really a tie between the hair that I did for my, um, well, I didn't do it. Uh, one of my friends did it, but the hair that I did for my speech, um, where I had that big, like, I had this huge, I'm, I'm about to move to the sides, plug in a little photo somewhere over here. But I had this huge little spiral top knot, and my hair was down in the back. That spiral top knot was mad fun. Um, and then the ponytail with the lock petals in the front that I did. Was it lock petals or a swoop? One of the two. But I did that for my birthday when I went to Paris. Uh, I think this was 2018. I had that style. And it was so cute. Like, the swoop. Like, I just feel like it complimented my face. It made me look so edgy. Like, I loved it. Um, so, yeah. I would say it's really a toss-up between those two. So, yeah. <laughs> you guys let me know if it's really that much of a toss-up or if there's like a clear winner and I'm just bugging. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. But guys, this video has been incredible. Y'all really keep me on my toes for real because some of these questions, it really pushed me to think about things that I hadn't really been thinking too deeply on as of late um so it sort of brought me back to that to that meditative space to really think about like some of the things you asked me um the societal questions like my thoughts you know about my hair my experience like these things were such amazing um things to talk about you know like 
shout out to all all my folks that's join that is joining me who are also part of the lock community like we know what is what it is we know what it's like um so it's really great to have an opportunity to build community with y'all and to just have this little chip chat i know i done spilled some of my little my little drink here uh my boyfriend probably will come and be like all right girl <laughs> time to put that down but it's okay because i had a great time you know chit chatting with you guys today once again don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i can't wait to see you guys on the next one it's gonna be a really fun one hint hint we're getting into our travel bag so i really really look forward to seeing y'all in the next one so i am going to say good night if you are drinking with me watching this video please Make sure that you're not driving after, okay? Because we don't do that. Call out Uber or, or get in your bed if you at home watching me on your TV. <laughs> but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Drink of the night, passion fruit mog. Yeah, we'll pop it in. Boom, bring it down. Okay, it says low wall glass, but I would like to use my martini glass, so we'll just go on ahead and put the martini glass right here. strong tonight. And voila! Passion fruit margarita ready for our little sip and chat. Cheers! Cheers.